This patient was referred to me for examination of teeth number 13 and 15. Mainly tooth number 15. Patient points to pointed to tooth number 15 mainly. Bridge, only two weeks old. Um, patient stays after the bridge was cemented. He has not been able to chew on the left side, has had multiple occlusal adjustments with no help. Tooth hurts to cold, to biting and chewing on the tooth, radiating, sharp shooting pain, constant throbbing pain, pain that he would have to take pain medication for, otherwise manage with pain medication, otherwise pain is substantial and severe. So he went and saw his dentist, this last time, and his dentist told him uh, he needed the root canal, uh, maybe one or two root canals, so refer the patient to us. Upon examination, um, both teeth, number 13 and 15, were ten tender to percussion, 15 more so than 13, palpation within normal limits, probings, two to three millimeters all around both teeth. Cold, number 13, responded and um, it was sensitive to cold, uh, but the uh, pain went away within seconds, so it wasn't lingering. Number 15, severe response to cold and pain was lingering more than, uh, I believe, 10, 10 to 12 seconds. So for now, I told the patient, let's just leave tooth number 13 alone and um, recommended an endodontic treatment for tooth number 15. So patient agreed. Take a look here. You can see that you have a pulp chamber and that pulp chamber is pretty deep, right? And then it just disappears. This is a sign of a, of course, partial calcification. And the other sign is that there's definitely something going on here that's more involved. If you're a general dentist, I highly recommend that you don't, you don't, a treat teeth like that and I will show you why take a look here this is just one angulation right take a look here now you see this this is the orifice of the MB1 MB2 and DB canals shared this orifice to here is shared by MB1, MB2, and this debacle. All right, so take a look. All the way to here, this goes to MB1 and MB2. Look how deep that split is between MB1 and MB2. Now, what I what you don't see is right here is the this debacle canal. Let me show you another angulation. Now, as a, as a general dentist, average general dentist, how would, you, how would you treat a case like this? Do you think it's a pretty straightforward case? As you can see, no, it's not. Three canals share the same orifice and then they split. This is the split from here of the DB canal. And here is the split. Look how deep that split is here the split of MB1 and MB2. This is the split, as you can see. This is the shared orifice right here, pa right parallel to the palatal canal orifice. This is the palatal canal. Right here is this, the split of the, of the DB. Look at that S-shaped S -shape curvature of the DB canal. Look at that, that's DB. This continues, goes to MB1 and MB2. Look at this angulation. Now, now you can see the DB canal. This is the DB canal. Again, look, the DB canal splits deep inside of the shared orifice of the MB1, MB2. And again, you can see the DB canal. That's the DB canal. That's the S-shaped curvature of the DB canal, look. 
Okay, S. Can you see that? <laughs> Amazing anatomy, right? Unbelievable anatomy. Nah, as a average general dentist, I don't think I don't think you, you can do this. So I highly recommend that you refer cases like that to an to an experienced endodontist. Um, you know, even endodontist, well, there are different levels of us. I happen to consider myself an experienced one because I've been doing this for 23 years. I'm not sure if I could have handled as an endodontist, handled a case like that, even as an endodontist in the first few years of after my residency, after, after being an endodontist. I'm not sure if I was able to eat, perhaps maybe even appreciate a case like that. So this is amazing, really amazing anatomy that MB1, MB2, and DB canals shared the same orifice. That needs to be recognized and appreciated. Only then these complex anatomies can be addressed, like in this case.